Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the Dexter. This is their part number DCH1000. This is a door closer is what it is. And, um, you know, if the body looks familiar to you, it probably does for a reason. It certainly does to me. They start to all kind of look alike and they're certain different categories after a while. Um, you know, uh, an LCN 4040 knockoff, uh, a Norton 7500 knockoff, Norton 1600 knockoffs, things of that nature. They start to roll together. And really, when it comes to the world of door closers, it's more of a case of if you're replacing one, the first question is, okay, what are the locations of the holes that hold the body to the door? Where are those located? Okay, And then we will know the footprint of the closer, and then we're going to know the closure you need as a result of that. Um, you know, I'll tell you, the footprint really works to define the closer itself, meaning if you have a footprint of an LCN 4041, you know, you're not going to take a Norton 1600 and put it on there because the holes won't line up. So you're going to be relegated to that 4041 footprint and that is generally, that's going to be a grade one door closer. Now there are clones and copies of it, but my point is, is the footprint itself leads us to knowing not only the type of closer that you're working with, but also the caliber of the closer. You know, a 1600 by Norton I think is a grade one closer. I don't recall, it likely is. Um, I know that certainly a 4040, 4040 XP certainly is. So if you were to, you know, give me dimensions that were eight and three sixteenths center on the holes, I'm going to realize that that's probably a fixed spring closer for a smaller size grade two. But if you've told me that it was, you know, 12 inch center to center, I'm going to say, okay, well, that's a Dorma 8600. That's a grade one closer. You know, on and on and on is the point. Uh, makes me realize I should build a chart. I think I will work on that. Um, what's your horizontal center to center? I think I'll work on that. Um, so this is a uh, aluminum uh, no, 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 not, not aluminum. This is going to be iron. Okay. Forgive me, let's back that up. This is an aluminum uh, body is what this is. Single piece cast aluminum body. As I'm looking at this, I'm saying, no, 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 that's cast. And then I said to myself after I said iron, no, no, this is too light. So I paused. This is a, a cast aluminum body. Uh, some people don't like aluminum bodies. Some people will tell you that they don't work as well. Other people say, I will only use a cast iron closer. I've seen cast iron closers crack. Um, the advantage of aluminum, whether or not it be, you know, durable or not, um, you know, every one of these manufacturers will have a warranty on such a thing. If your cast iron body cracks, it's probably going to be a warranty matter. Uh, what's ad advantageous of the aluminum uh, body is that it weighs less. This entire door closer with all its accoutrement, its screw packs, its uh, cover, which is here, I'll show you, its arm is not, less than nine and a half pounds. So as you take a door and cycle it a hundred times, that's great, cycle it a million times, cycle it ten million times. That's a lot of additional wear and tear when a closer goes from nine and a half pounds to twelve pounds. You know, that sort of scenario. So I think it's advantageous in that regard. You're moving a lot less material. Um, this is going to be quite the full featured closer when it comes to valve control. We're going to go over all of those valves. Installation is simple and straightforward, completely reversible, non-handed. It's going to be adjustable with the spring power here. So there are five places to insert a wrench here. What's nice about this is that it has a legend on here in terms of what they're showing you and what is what. So, and we're going to get to that when we go over the installation instructions. What they have all of this, these valves labeled as. Okay. Speaking of footprint, the horizontal center to center, six and three quarter. The vertical center to center, about two and three eighths, maybe two and seven sixteenths. We're going to take a uh, closer look at that when we look at the template. 
Okay. I'm going to put this aside, and we're going to start this off, by the way, with a visual review of the of the item. It has your label on it. Okay. Fun fact. Uh, fun fun fact. Actually, question. And here's your cover, by the way. And this question leads to the cover. Let's give you an idea of the dimensional properties of this full cover. 13 and 9 sixteenths by about 3 and 3 quarter by about 2 and an eighth. Here's the question. If you have a fire rated door, and this can be used on a fire rated door, if your door is installed and it works just fine and there's no cover, the plastic cover was removed, vandalism, whatever, is that door still fire rated? The question is the short answer is no, it's not. It's not fire rated. The long answer is it depends. And it depends based on what the installation instructions say. Believe it or not, if the installation instructions call out installing a cover on the unit, and I'm sure somewhere in here it does, because it's pictured with it. Okay. You would require that cover to have a compliant fire rated door, a door installation. So the answer is, do the installation instructions call for it? Because the installation instructions is how the unit was tested. In a fire test, you're going to get to 1800 degree in about three minutes. You're going to park there for the next two hours and 57 seconds. This little piece of plastic is long gone. Um, the fact of the matter is, does the cover do anything? I would have to say no, not at all. But it was tested that way. So that's the trick question in that regard. So continuing with our visual tour, installation instructions, a template. Um, the template is great. Some people would not be able to install a door closer without them. Uh, some people don't use them at all. Um, I, use, I use them as a reality check against the installation instructions and then I usually lay the holes out myself or I'll make my own template. Um, you know, just, just the way I am. Screw packages, there's <laughs> everything here that you need. There are wood screws, there are machine screws, there are, uh, fem there are sex bolts as a result. The female portion of the sex bolts are here. You have self-tapping screws, okay? That sex bolt is, this is the female portion. The male portion is just this machine screw. If you're, if you're sex bolting the closer to the door, this, this is a very special piece of equipment in the sense that the exact length is specific and it has splines. So the length is specific, meaning so that when you drill the 3 8 hole from the side opposite of the closer body, you're doing either a parallel arm or a regular arm. You wouldn't use sex bolts in a top jam installation, although you could, I guess. Uh, you, you wouldn't sex bolt that. Your, your header would be reinforced. Your door should be reinforced too, but it might be a mineral core wood door that's not been reinforced. Um, you'll drill a 3 8 hole from one side. You'll push that female side in. The splines will keep it from rotating as you put the male screw in and turn it. Also, the length, the length from the underside of the head to the back of the bolt is basically 1 and 5 8 which would be the distance from the uh, you know inside sheet metal on one side of the door or the inside skin to the shoulder of it uh, as you tighten the, the bolt the male side you won't crush the door in so sex bolts are pretty smart in that regard um, be mindful to use these only when you're supposed to uh, you'll refer to your hardware schedule your approved hardware schedule um, or submittal package I should say to determine whether or not those sex bolts are supposed to be used just because they're in the package doesn't mean they're supposed to be used um, if you were doing a proper pro project, you would supply the fasteners Oof. only, I'm sure you must have been able to hear that, uh, with only the proper fasteners because you don't want the installer to um, inadvertently install the wrong fasteners uh, or think it's, you know, think it's permissible to use anything that they want. Um, so be mindful of that. You don't want to have an application where there's four pair of 3010 Anna Gray doors and there are all these little silver dots on the door and the architect comes and said, says what are those silver dots on my doors that cost a thousand dollars a leaf so don't use them unless you're supposed to 
Uh, you're going to get a regular arm. Typical arm baloney is what you're going to see here. Just regular stuff. Main arm. This all comprises, uh, comprises the forearm, your arm shoe, and you're going to get a parallel arm bracket in case you are doing a PA mount. Okay. Typical sort of material. The valve identification, we're going to go over that when we look at the installation instructions. Okay. If you're servicing the closer, it's awfully nice that you have that label on there so that it tells you what you're doing. What valve controls what on this closer. Okay, We're going to go into that right now. Let's switch to the screen view and look at the installation instructions. Okay, we are looking at the item here. DCH100, uh, pardon me, DCH1000, standard closer, that's going to mean full cover, regular arm with the PA bracket in aluminum. Door closer, Trot, tri packed, regular, parallel, or top jam mount. This closure could be mounted one of the three common ways non hold open, adjustable spring tension one through six. It's considered heavy duty, it's grade one, has a full cover and an and aluminum finish. Grade one UL and UL 10C listed, surface mounted, can be mounted on the push or pull side. It's tri packed or tri mount. Uh, just that refers to those three methods. Fully adjustable, full cover, six and three quarter by two and three eighths mounting pattern. Okay. Um, standard cylinder. Product catalog and installation instructions. Let's knock off the product catalog first. This is an overview of the Dexter line of equipment. It is a, you know, generally a introductory line of commercial hardware under the Allegion umbrella. Um, you know, I don't know the marketing intent of the name Dexter, but in under Allegion you have, in terms of locks, you have Schlage and Falcon, and I don't really know where the Dexter name fits. It might be the economy grade material uh, in the sense of it being you know, you don't want, you know, the, the project does not call for Schlage grade one, uh, you know, ND series locks because you're doing a typical strip mall. Well, Allegiant says, fine, don't use Schlage, use Dexter. Use our Dexter line. Because in the Dexter line, they're going to be able to give you, I had said 12 inch earlier and I'd said Dorma, which is true. That is a um, DCM 1000. The point being, we're cycling through here through different door closer series. It's going to be your typical modern style closer, your storefront style. They call it a light duty. It's still grade one. Grade, forgive me, grade one means it's passed a million cycles. Who knows how long it would survive for? It just it's gone to a million cycles. Uh, so to say that it's light duty, you know that this one's medium duty. They're grade one, a million cycles. Um, they would be considered disposable. You could not go about repairing those. Then they're going to have their DCR 8000. This is probably lower end. Yeah, so the DCL 2000 is going to be adjustable 1 through 6. This has a spring rating of 1 to 4 which really means the maximum door width you would ever use this on would be a three foot door when it swings out. So your three foot six, your four foot doors, your eight foot doors, this is not the closer for you. Would be considered heavy duty for residential applications though. Um, I think we skipped over our DC H1000. There it is. We did skip right past it. Or no, we must have stopped here. Okay. Accessory plates, drop plates, things of that nature. Exit devices. Obviously, Dexter is going to be related to Falcon slash Doromatic slash Monarch and Von Duprin when it comes to exit devices. This stuff does somewhat eerily look like a 22 series exterior trim, which would not surprise me. Okay. So I think it's really just a marketing perspective. 
you know, if there were if there were hinges under Dexter, that would make sense. You know, what do you need? Hinges, locks, door closers, exit devices. That's what you need. So if they added some standard hinges here, it would be a competitive entry line. So let's close that up. Let's get to the installation instructions that are here. I know that our internet is out because of that thunder that you hear outside, that heavy raining. However, I did have it pulled up first, so here it is. Now this set of installation instructions meets my criteria for a uh, really simple, straightforward, no-nonsense type of installation. Four pages. Although there is a typo. Um, and I'll point that out in a moment. So the four pages are page one. Here's an introduction. Here's what the valves are called. Here's the bill of materials of what's included. Um, here are the, here's a summary of the three mount types. So valves. You have latch, L. Latch is going to be from zero to about 10 degree. Okay. And I've got the body here in front of me and I can see the different valves and how they're marked. And I am looking at it the same way that you are here from a top-down perspective. This is, there's nothing here. Your SD is your sweep speed. I'm not sure why they put a D there. Um, and now the power is flickering. So far so good. Okay, so the, that, you know, I, I, I'm just taking a guess here. The main speed valve, that could govern both the closing, that, that, that's obviously going to cover the closing cycle um, from basically about 80 degree to about 10 degree, okay? Um, why D is involved there, I'm, I'm really not sure why that's involved there. So I don't know why they're calling it D. If I find out, I'll amend this description. The P valve, valve is normally closed. I have a theory about that as well. B is back. To, we'll talk about that in a moment if my theory is correct. Well, here's my theory, that if you do a parallel arm application, you are going to leave that valve normally closed. A parallel arm installation is one where the mechanics of the door closer operate differently because the orientation of the arm to the closer body. The relationship of the positioning of the arm to the closer body and how much it moves through the closing cycle is different than when you're doing a top jam or a regular arm mount. So you might leave that valve closed for a parallel arm mount because it will shorten the pathway that the fluid goes through through the body. And you might open that up if you do a regular or a top jam mount. We'll see if that's the case. That is the case on Dexter sister company LCN on the 4040 with a funny little valve on the back. B is back check. That is going to be from basically 80 or 90 degree out. So if you get that door open and then a gust of wind catches it, the back check valve is there to arrest the uncontrolled aggressive free swinging of the door closer. The next control is going to be spring power on the end of the uh, on the end of the cylinder. Uh, yeah, okay, so that's the bottom line. Okay, we've sorted it out. D is for delayed action. So my bet is, yeah, that's what happens. So in our closer, we've got latch, S, and D, sweep and delayed action. If you ordered a delayed action closer, you'll have latch, sweep, and delayed action. Delayed action literally controls the closing cycle of the door from well past 90 say 130 degree into where it gets into the sweep range and you can control that from 80 to 120 in the closing cycle or 130 to the closing cycle so that you can really slow it down in that part meaning if there's someone going through the opening on a wheelchair you can slow the closer down from 90 to zero you can make it take two minutes to close but that's no good when I'm in the opening in a wheelchair I want the door fully opened 
and then staying in the fully opened and creeping closed position while I get through the opening before it falls into the S range, the sweep range. So there you go. Uh, so in a delayed action, they're going to bump over here, the sweep control. If you are doing a three foot door, regular arm or parallel, uh, regular or top jam, don't do any modification to the spring power. If you're going with a heavier door or a parallel arm closer, you might have to increase that a little bit. They give a summary of our fasteners. Okay, whether you're doing wood or metal, drilled and tapped, tech screws, self drillers, sex bolts, you're covered. Just be sure of which one you're supposed to use. Summary, pull side application, we call that a regular arm. Push side application, we call that this one, we call this top jam. Parallel arm, we call that parallel arm. Closer is on the, closer body is on the door, closer body is on the header. Closer body is on the door on the pull side, closer body is on the door on the push side. So page one is a summary, gives you just the summary of everything. The next three pages are, guess what, the three different mount types. So the typo comes in right at the top of page two, which is regular arm. They've called that parallel arm. Page three is our top jam mount. Page four is parallel arm. They're not using parallel arm, regular arm, top jam. They're basically saying push side. Uh, top jam is also called push side. So they're deviating from what that needs to be called. So the bottom line is, let's just, of pages two, three, and four, regular arm, top jam, and parallel arm, let's just focus on the parallel arm because it's probably the one you're doing. Um, not necessarily, but it could be. The point of the matter is, <clears throat> the installation instructions are always the same because all you're doing is referencing the vertical axis of pivoting, the center line of the hinge barrel, let's say, or the pivot, to the first hole, then you know it's six and three quarter, and then you know it's of a specific height. So in this case, from the soffit, it's two and a half inch. Well, the soffit, this is not the top of the door or the underside of the header, it's the soffit. And the soffit is oops. Here's the soffit. Oops, let's do this. cross section of our header and here's our door door is going to swing out that two and a half inch dimension is from the soffit this is the stop right this is the stop face that's called the soffit so it's two and a half inch from the soffit to the center line of that first hole that's where that's referencing. You also know it because they show the parallel arm bracket being mounted to it. Okay, Then this would be the rabbit area here. And if it's a typical hollow metal frame, that dimension is 5 eighths. So all of the installation instructions are the same when it comes to telling you, here's where I want you to drill the holes for the body. Now, what you'll notice about parallel arm is the cylindrical portion is pointed away from the hinge side of the door with the top jam mount, it also is, with the regular arm mount, it also is. And the reason I point that out is because that's not the case with all door closers. Um, so be mindful of that. Just follow, when you're doing your installation, literally follow what it looks like um, on your screen or on your installation instructions. So back to, the one, back to the parallel arm installation we're doing. So they're all the same in the sense that there's always going to be a table that tells you where to drill those holes. But that table is always going to be related to the degree of opening. The closer that you move that body towards the vertical axis of pivoting, the greater the degree of opening. So be mindful. If you need that door to go to 180 degree, you'll be at five and a quarter. But if it really needs to go no more than 110, you'll be at seven and a quarter from the edge. Okay. 
once you have that located, you are then able to make all of your other dimensions because they are giving you the same reference for the parallel arm bracket from the center line of the vertical axis of pivoting, which is literally the center line of the hinge. That's what they're referencing off of. Is that an easy thing to measure to? Not really, but you know, you can see that there's not a tremendous amount of precision in these dimensions. So go to the edge of the door, add a sixteenth of an inch, voila, you're there. The cover is clearly indicated as being installed, so there, you'll need that if it's fire rated. Your valve control. So I've seen the rabbit and the tortoise, the hare and the tortoise, and other Allegiant properties. Speed it up, slow it down. Okay? It's lefty loosey, righty tighty. Um, turn it clockwise, and it's going to close the valve. Now, one cool thing about this closer, uh, and that unfortunately the internet oh is back up I think I can pull it back up one cool thing about this closer and many others do not offer it is this staked staked independent adjustment valves what that means is these valves have a process done on them by which the top of the body has been punched or staked which re, re, which restricts you from unintentionally threading that out so far that the valve stem will come out. The first time I adjusted the door closer I turned that counterclockwise too much and I cycled the door and as pressure built inside of the body it forced it burst the valve stem out and oil all over my shirt. And that was at 8 in the morning. So that's what we were doing the rest of the day with an oily shirt. Um, so the fact that this is staked is, is really a hallmark of a high-end closer. And this, this certainly does not carry the price of a high-end closer. So looking at the rest of the parallel arm, you know, I'm going to leave it to you to read this stuff. I just wanted to point out what was most important about where to place the thing. I will tell you that the height dimension is super cru crucial. There's not a lot of margin between your arm and the underside of the soffit. If this dimension is, if you made that two and a two and three eighths or, or two and five sixteenths, you can count on that arm hitting the header. It's hard to move a hole three sixteenths of an inch or three thirty second of an inch. So be mindful of that. When I look at the table, I look at the installation instructions. I make my own template sometimes. And I double check because I do not want to drill the hole in the wrong position. Uh, I did that once, and it's there's no elegant way out of it. Um, now, something about the regular arm mount I want to point out to you. If you'd like a little extra oomph happening on your closer, you can move that screw towards the hinge side in your in your arm shoe. That is known to give you a little extra closing force. Just the latch portion. If you have some sort of a wind condition or some sort of a installation issue with the door and frame, moving that screw over to that position may resolve that. Try it only as necessary. Top jam, again, going to be the same sort of logic and concept as placing everything that we're talking about here. Okay, You only use the parallel arm bracket for the parallel arm installation. You won't end up using it for a regular arm, obviously. Save those. You never know. You might need one someday. And they aren't free if you have to buy one. I don't see anything else on the installation instructions that are worth pointing out, um, except that I will tell you that when you install the door closer, you likely need to new do nothing to it to adjust the spring tension um, and your valves. If you do adjust those, adjust them maybe a half of a turn at a time and then cycle your door two or three times closed, open and then closed to bring equilibrium to the closer. Don't cycle it once, then make another change and you'll say to yourself, well that didn't change at all or it changed way too much. Cycle it two or three times. I find works better for me. 
Okay, so there's a link below this video to the manufacturer's page here. And that's going to allow us to review not only all of the Dexter products that we sell, but also a link to the manufacturer's catalog, which we've gone through, as well as a link to the manufacturer's website. Let's wrap up this video on camera. Okay, so why would I use this closer and why I would suggest that you would use it? First of all, it's under the Allegion umbrella. Allegion has properties Schlage, LCN, Von Duprin, Glenn Johnson, Ives, Falcon, Zero. I'm forgetting somebody major. Obviously Dexter, but someone else, I think. The point of the matter is their technical support is exceptional. World-class people. People in the door closer department. Uh, the I, 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 I always grasp at words when I'm trying to describe how exceptional, how prompt, reliable, predictable the technical support department is at LCM. Phenomenal. Um, they are dealing with applications where they realize that you aren't an expert about door closers, but they want to make you an expert. You can call them and say, here's my application, here's what the client wants to use, the architect, the contractor, whomever. I need some guidance, I need some help. These people have the skill, the knowledge, the data through testing that will help guide you through the process. And after you speak to them a handful of times, you really start to build your toolkit. Schlage and Von Duprin have the same exceptional customer service technical support. The issue is Dexter, um, Ives, Falcon, you can't, you're kind of talking to the same people some of the time. So you've got this culture of excellence when it comes to technical support. That's number one. Number two, those staked valves. You're not going to have somebody blow that valve. It happens all the time. And I feel bad for a client because there's no way to put the genie back in the bottle. The oil will not go back into the cylinder. It's, it needs to be replaced. You need to mop up the oil <laughs> and wash your shirt. Um, after that, it's very economical. You really can't go wrong with the price. It's, it's ridiculous how attractive it is in terms of the cost. It's fire rated. It's grade one. Now, the only thing that I don't see here is what their warranty is on this closer. And I don't see a statement at all when it comes to Dexter warranties on these closers. Um, the truth of the matter is it may not be of a concern to you. Uh, we know that it's well longer than a year. I would not be surprised if it was 10 years. I would actually be a little surprised if it wasn't 25 years. These are the sorts of warranties that are on closers. That's pretty standard. If you need to know that, reach out and I'll find out from them. But my knee-jerk reaction is that it's a decade or longer. It may not apply to you because in nine years, you know, having a warranty claim is, is not going to probably be something that anyone ever calls us about. You won't be the person who purchased it. You won't know where it was purchased from. You won't have the original receipt. You need all of that to do a warranty claim. And if you're buying this closer, keep all of that. Your receipt, the date of the sale, who you bought it from. Because that's what you need for a warranty claim. Uh, word to the wise. So I would be mindful that does it matter what its warranty is when it's a decade or longer? Sure, of course it does. Are you going to be the person to claim a warranty issue? Probably not. But if you are, keep that information. Um, and I can tell you that my experience with the Elysian folks, they're, as I said earlier, they're just really great. Uh, this is made. This is obviously an imported closure. It actually is stamped Taiwan on it. Uh, that's got everything to do with the reason that it is so economical. If you have any questions on this DCH 1000 series closer or any other Dexter product or a Legion product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.